Okay, today I thought I, I would show you a book that I've been meaning to get since it came out late last year, um, The Art of Ron Cobb. Um, I've been an admirer and a lover of Ron's work um, ever since I first came across it in this book, The Book of Alien, which uh, came out when the film came out, Alien came out in 79, and this book, I've said before, either here or, or on Effectively Speaking, uh, one of my podcasts, um, I, I used to read this book over and over and over again. Um, it's just packed with just, you know, stunning photos from the film. This is way before, you know, the video age, so this is the only way that you could see images. Uh, look at that. Um, and yeah, I was entranced by H.R. Giger's design work, but especially uh, the design work in here of uh, Mobius, Chris Foss, and especially Ron Cobb, because uh, throughout this book, you've got photos of things like the corridors of the Nostromo, but you also had, let me remove that, you also had these beautiful, beautiful um, pieces of art by Ron, either line work, paintings, or blueprints. Um, he was a fabulous um, uh, designer with a massive imagination, very unique, and something that crops up in, in articles about him and in this new book is he was not only a fantastic illustrator, but he was a designer. Anything he, he uh, drew looked like it could be made and could be made and uh, yeah he, he really came from a design and an engineering point of view he, everything he made or drew sorry was feasible and he went into such fabulous detail like there um, showing you the three levels of the Nostromo all right and this is a fabulous book um, and as I say I poured over it endlessly there's just something about Chris Foss's um, design work and his use of colour. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. And fabulous book. If you, if you haven't got this book, um, I think it, it's been republished many, many times um, and is still out there and it is really worth tracking down. But for the longest time, this is my only book I had with Ron's work in it. He produced or they produced a book on his work called Color Vision back in the uh, early 80s which is incredibly rare which equals incredibly expensive now if you wanted to buy it um, and from time to time I, I did Amanar, and, um, and I'm glad I didn't because yeah this book came out end of last year The Art of Ron Cobb uh, produced by Titan Books um, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm I've put off getting it. I don't know why. I mean, you, you know, modelling projects come along, life gets in the way, but uh, finally got one. So I thought what today is, I'll, I'll have a look through with you. Um, if you if you uh, were I'm in an R in, this might make your mind up as to whether you're going to get it. It's not going to be pa all the pages. It will take too long. But as you can see, I've, I've bookmarked places. Um, and we'll start off with the introduction from... Um, James Cameron and he does it better than I could if you're thinking who the bloody hell's Ron Cobb right he says over here if you were a fan of fantasy and science fiction films in the 70s and 80s or are a fan of those films now you have most certainly seen the work of Ron Cobb brought to life on the screen probably without realizing it Ron designed so many of the vehicles sets props and costumes of that time that he is recognized by the generation of designers who came after him as one of the titans of the era. He was certainly a huge influence on me in my formative years as a fledgling filmmaker and it was one of my great pleasures to have been able to work with him and to realize on screen so many of his designs. Well said James. Right so here we go we're going to have a flick through. Um, I wasn't aware because it, it's 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 I'm going to say, I was going to say, it's exhaustive, but it's not 100%. Um, some of those images I just showed you from the Book of Alien aren't in here. Um, 
which is a bit of an oddity. Some of his designs that he did on Aliens aren't in here. So it's a bit odd. This is nice, though. I didn't realise. I, I know that Ron was a, a, a big fan even before he got into the industry. Um, back in the 60s when he was uh, um, earning money being a political cartoonist, he was a big fantasy science fiction fan. And he was a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft. And uh, th it says here, this is a nod to his work, right? So, yeah, much respect, Ron. I'm always up for a bit of Cthulhu. That's an odd phrase. Um, and yeah, we've got some Cthulhu-inspired imagery here. This screams Star Wars to me, especially the hammerhead alien that he um, uh, went on to design. But no, this, this was done uh, in the late 1950s as part of an art show. Okay. So, first section is film and TV. Yep, they uh, mention about how Dan O'Bannon knew Ron Cobb, was a fan of him, and uh, asked him to um, design the Dark Star. Um, couldn't nail him down, couldn't nail him down. One, They were in desperation, they managed to track him down late one night, took him off to a coffee place, piled him with cake and coffee, and asked him to draw the Dark Star. Um, and he did on 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 a yellow napkin. He did um, a plan of of the Dark Star, which he later refined into that beautiful blueprint that you see there. Um, classic ship that. Um, I've got to get a model of that sometime. Um, and then yeah, onto Star Wars. He designed yeah the Hammerhead. Okay. And that fella. Oh sorry. He also worked with Dan O'Bannon. It's not well known that Dan O'Bannon actually worked on the first Star Wars, and Dan roped Ron in to, to help him out with things like the um, the computer displays of the Death Star, etc., etc. Um, now it'll be CGI. Back then it was hand-drawn animation. So, yeah, before Ron on Alien, um, it was decided that H.R. Giga would design the Alien and Ron would do the Earth technology. Um, before that was actually, you know, refined down and that was the deal. Um, Ron Cobb, along with Chris Foss, Mobius and others were asked to come up with all sorts of designs for the whole film. Um, planets, aliens, spaceships, whatever. So this is one of Ron's um, designs for the alien planet. There's Ron's, one of Ron's takes on the derelict the Leviathan, which will become the um, the Nostromo. This is the Nostromo, almost recognisable now. Um, this um, Brian Johnson took this illustration, and um, <clears throat> when they built the Nostromo model, they followed Ron Cobb's paint scheme and painted it yellow. But Ridley Scott didn't like that, um, and ha had it go to uh, the gunmetal that it was. All right, so yeah, if you if you know of Ron Cobb, you know these designs. Um, brilliant draftsman, as I say, even down to designing the Nostromo chairs. Here's the corridors, but again, they don't show you the 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 little three stage little thumbnails of um, the the shape of the three types of tunnels. All right, so we'll skip through this. I love that. I love that Ron Cobb design of the spaceship. Yep, he designed the patches, the uh, the icon, the iconography that you see dotted all around the ship. That was Ron. Never seen this illustration before of Jones in his carry case. This I know of from the Book of Alien, but not that. There's Ron. There he is, the man himself with Dan O'Bannon. Okay. <coughs> There's Ron in Ash's med lab. So I'll skip forward. Yeah, June. Um, I've never seen this illustration before, but uh, that's Ron's design on the uh, ornithopter. Um, this is the proposed June that was um, going to be produced in, in the mid 70s, but uh, um, it was dismissed. It was to NASA. All right. This is news to me as well. Um, this is Tot 
Thot, the uh, the Ronald Lacey character from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, I knew that originally he was going to have a robotic arm, but I never knew that Christopher Lee was actually in the uh, in the running to play him. Um, that would have been different. Um, but I love Ronald Lacey as that chap, so uh, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, the uh, the plane that Indiana Jones has the fight around in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ron came up with different versions. And uh, yeah, the version you see in the film is a Ron Cop design. For two weeks, he worked on Conan the Barbarian. Um, only two weeks. Um, um, John Milius then went off to work on something else so but look in two weeks he produced an awful lot of stuff I love this it says here this image was done as a joke for the art department to illustrate that this degree of violence in the movie would be sickening all right but in two weeks that's a heck of a lot of illustrations all right so we're going to skip forward I think to night skies this is the film that Spielberg was going to do, um, which morphed into E.T., but back when it was going to be a sinister alien abduction tale, Ron was designing these sinister aliens. All right. I wasn't aware that he was on board to do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy back in the early 80s when there was going to be um, a live-action version. Um, yeah. Last Starfighter. Of course, he designed the aliens and the spaceships in that. All right. I'm going to jump forward a bit. Back to the Future. Quite rightfully, they, the, um, you know, the producers of the film are quoted here, you know, uh, Robert Zemeckis and, 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 and whomever, that it was Ron Cobb who came up with this. Um, um, he's the one who who turned a rather plain DeLorean into something that looked pretty functional. All right, robot jocks, of course. He designed the big robots in that, and then we're on to aliens. Now, some of them I've never seen before, like this one. Seen these before, but as I say, it's not exhaustive, and I thought a book a book totally devoted to um, his work would be um, The Abyss he's back with James Cameron for The Abyss it was totally down to Rob uh, Deep Core 2 that was all Rob's design didn't do any of the aliens though just hardware okay The Rocketeer um, it says here about when they made the original backpack for the Rocketeer. They, they copied Dave Stevens' uh, backpack. Absolutely accurate, but it wouldn't work. Um, um, it, it's one of those things that it works in a comic, doesn't work in real life, and it, was, it wasn't until uh, um, Ron came in and tweaked it and put it, made it double-barreled that it actually started to work. Sixth day, we're going into other films now. Cats and Dogs, he worked on that. Let me jump forward a bit. I absolutely did not know, oh, Running Man. I didn't know that he was going to be involved if they had done John Carter of Mars back in the 90s. But there's a Thark by Rom. And there's some of the hardware. All right. Space Truckers, he was instrumental in doing Space Truckers. And then we go on to District 9. I wasn't aware that he uh, was involved in that. Planet Ice, Landfall. And then there's a whole section on work that he does done on video games. I'm skipping a lot of these. And then we get into his uh, political cartoons, which he was doing before he uh, moved into film work. And then posters, album covers, etc., etc., etc. All right. Bless him. There he is. Um, and yeah, that's 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 about it. Um, a lovely, lovely book. 
hardback. Um, yeah, I, I, I really do recommend it. Um, the only thing is, as I say, it's not got 100% all of his stuff in it. Um, it would be nice. I mean, it's a thick enough book. But it would be nice if it was a little bit thicker and had more illustrations or less text and more illustrations. But, no, um, highly recommended from me.